Hello Steelers and welcome to another Bench Report Hobby Update. Uh, quite a busy one this week because I've actually taken, I took a, a week off work because when we get to April, the end of the financial year, we have to take a, a use up our leave otherwise we can't really carry a lot of it over into the next year. So basically I know with a lot of leave so I, just, I ended up taking the week off. I just thought let's just use it up as much as I can. Didn't have any other reason for it really but uh, I thought well what I can do is I can actually get quite a lot of videos made and other bits and pieces because I'm kind of falling behind really with my video schedule and I'm kind of I'm I'm not where I want to be if that makes sense because I only have a couple of videos ahead of me and I like to have quite a few more so I've used this time uh, while my wife was working in the daytime to uh, try to bang out as many videos as possible I'll tell you all about those because that's going to come up in a second but uh, of course I've Obviously also been doing a bit of painting here and there as well. Uh, one of the things I finished was the epic uh, Warlord epic figures. I, I decided to do the French uh, horse artillery. The, there's only three guns in the uh, the French starter set. There's more for the the, uh, the, the, the the foot artillery, but for the horse artillery, there's only three guns. So I thought, well, let's just paint those, get those out of the way. It's a nice little, uh, it stops me just going mad from painting 28 millimeter T-34s. So I did that, finished that off, they were, they're, they're done. Uh, so I've not finished another full sprue for a while. I think I might go back to some French infantry in a bit because I did some French cavalry recently. Uh, I'll have a look, I'll see what I can do because at the moment uh, I'm trying not to get too tired of painting the epic stuff, but you know, you know, when you're painting the same stuff over and over again, it does kind of get boring, but I'm trying to break it up with other things here and there. The other thing I did break it up with was the 28mm Tiger tank that uh, Warlord sent as part of their stuff they sent over for Actung Panzer as well. I've also filmed this as well and I'm going to be uh, turning that into a tutorial video as well. So that's going to be coming next few weeks. I'm going to say I'm trying to build up this bit of a backlog uh, for videos coming out over the next uh, the next few weeks at least. So the Tiger Tank uh, tutorial video will be coming at some point uh, in the next few. I've got to base at the moment. I've got to uh, edit the voiceover and then also just splice it all together. That won't take very long, but um, I'm not sure where it's going to fit into my schedule because I've got a couple other videos I need to edit as well. So as I say, really, I mean, this week has mostly been, rather than anything else, uh, videoing, just making videos and things, just uh, trying to add to the back catalogue. So, I recorded a game of Actung Panzer. Uh, I did it in 15mm because I'd not, at that point, painted the Tiger. That hadn't finished yet. Um, so I didn't have any 28, apart from the T-34s, I had no other 28mm vehicles to use on the table. So I thought, well, I'll do uh, a quick battle report in 15mm and do it in uh, using two T-34s versus a Tiger. Uh, so I played that, I made a few notes on it and things. I want to do an actual proper full review of Actung Panzer now having played it. I'll probably play a couple more games and record those as well, again with the 28mm stuff and just see how it goes. Uh, I want to do a bit of a review on it because I've got a few ideas about it. Some stuff I like, some stuff I don't like, you know, it's like any set of rules really. Uh, but I'll talk more about that in a proper review of it probably in the next few weeks. Uh, hope, uh, uh, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Then off the back of that, I thought what I'll do is, well, because I'm doing an, an Actung Panzer game, I'll do a what a, uh, what a uh, tanker game. <laughs> I nearly called it what a cowboy. Uh, what a tanker game. Uh, basically, to kind of compare and contrast the two different rules. I thought that's a, a, a reasonable way to go about these things. And I just thought, you know, it's use exactly the same setup, exactly the same forces, and just see how it plays out. You know, how the two different rules, because I've not played Wokata Tanker since we played it at the club several months ago, and I've not played it before then for ages. And it's a good, fun little game. It really is. Uh, so it was nice to go back to it. Also, uh, it's going to be salute in a, uh, in a week, in fact, just less than a week uh, when this video is out. Uh, and I'm going to be helping Joe Bilton with his massive Stalingrad game of uh, Water Tanker in the morning at least, uh, which is going to be a drop-in game. So if you are down there, come along and say hello. Uh, but um, yeah, so I kind of needed to play Water Tanker again just to get my idea, my head around the rules itself. So I know what I'm doing when I, when I play it in a week. <laughs> Um, 
and also as well the other thing that I recorded was uh, a sharp practice game uh, this was the punch up lansois because I've only got a 3x4 table at the moment I thought well I may as well take advantage of this this was in the 2019 Lardy special with 100 uh, days lists for sharp practice that Joe McGuinn made along with Lardy Nick I think he, he helps out as well uh, but this game was play, is played on a 3x3 table basically uh, so it's really really enclosed it's really a small urban combat ring it was a really vicious game as well Prussians versus the French the uh, the chasseurs of the the guard plus a few of the voltigeurs as well uh, and it was it was really vicious I'll not tell you who's won at the end of it but um, you may be able to tell from the, some of the photographs that, that should be uh, up at the moment or I've gone but it was a great game I mean sharp practice is such a good game I always forget how good it is when I don't play it for a while and it's the first one I've played since September I think when I got back from Waterloo I played a game of it then uh, and I've been wanting to play this scenario in particular the punch-up one in particular for quite some time now so I'm glad I managed to get it onto the table so yes yeah, uh, good fun good fun it was the other thing as well we played uh, this week down at the club was Dex and I began our next pint size campaign and this is the Malaya 1942 uh, campaign. This was written by Len Tracy and I think it's in the one of the Two Fat Lardies specials and I can't, couldn't tell you off the top of my head which one it is. It might be 2016, around about then. Uh, and it's basically uh, the Malay, the, the, the Japanese attacking the Australians just on the edge of Singapore basically or you could play it in Singapore as well if you wanted to. But we were playing it in Malaya in the jungle in the jungle heat I took the Australians and uh, Dex took the Japanese again really vicious but also very very tactical and uh, grinding game that we played it was really really interesting um, we were talking about it afterwards and I was feeling really hemmed in on my right flank as he was pushing uh, units down on that flank meanwhile I was holding my own on the left or I felt I was uh, and I think by the end of it uh, Dex had got something like about 15 casualties 15 Japanese casualties uh, I had five Australian casualties and I thought right I, in in the game the the uh, Japanese get to replenish their platoons if they uh, win the scenario so if they lose the scenario they get a fresh platoon basically if they win they take the platoon onto the next bit uh, I, as the Australians, only get one platoon and that's it. Uh, I think you get reinforcements about halfway through, but God, you know, you, every single casualty really means something in the next game, so you've got to really be careful. And there's always a bit of a uh, uh, an urge sometimes, I guess, when you're playing a, a campaign in the first one, in the first scenario at least, is to basically, you know, just shove everything in and try and win the game and it really it, it absolutely banjaxes you for the next several next several games you know when you're recovering from those casualties so i i kind of had that in mind and i thought right five is enough out of what 30 30 or 36 men i thought that's enough some are going to come back some will lost bit forever but i want a, a big enough uh, sex platoon in the next one as well and having played this solo a long time ago uh, you can find uh, videos of that on this channel uh, having played it I, I know how hard it is for the Australians in this one uh, and I kind of want to challenge myself in the game as well uh, that's why I suggested I take the Australians and Dex takes the Japanese I will kind of want that uh, all or nothing defense challenge really and see how I go uh, I'm quite happy with how my performance was uh, uh, but you know I still lost the game <laughs> Uh, this weekend as well, um, depending on what happens, I'm supposed to be going to the club all day. Uh, by the time this video is out, I should be there at that, po that point. Uh, all going well. I may not make it, but if I do go, we're going to be playing a game of GDA 2. It's going to be my first game of it. Uh, Paul's going to be running it. It's going to be a few players on either side, so it's going to be a bit of a learning game. So I'm, I'm expecting it to be slow. Uh, Paul had suggested uh, me bringing the camera down and recording it. I don't think I will because, I thought about it, I don't think I will just because um, when you're playing with a lot of people filming stuff does kind of interfere with the game and we're all wanting to learn it rather than actually you know film it. I will play it at some point uh, on the table here and film it simply I just haven't got the figures for it yet but it will come at some point but just not this time around. Uh, 
All right, I'll leave it to that. There's not much else to say. If you are at Salute next week, uh, do come up and say hello. Uh, even if you see me walking about with a camera, uh, just say hello and uh, make yourself known. And uh, also, if you're buying anything from Warlord, don't forget I have an affiliate link with them. It's down in the description down below. Costs you nothing. Puts a bit more cash back into the uh, into the, the videos and into the channel, and it, it certainly helps things out. So please use that if you are buying anything from Warlord. Uh, it will be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next Storm Steel video.